Welcome to my universe. I'm calling it the Chris Stryer universe. It's a theory about everything where life is included. Actually, the point about my theory is that consciousness is antimatter. There's a lot of reasons that I come up with this idea and I'm going to try to explain it here on this video. A quick go through in physics is the atom. We know today that it's not looking like that. It's more like a dusty cloud, waves, uh, very unpredictable way of the electron going through the proton. But actually nobody has seen an electron and nobody has seen a proton. So we cannot exactly know just in our imagination how an atom looks like. So uh, then we have the Big Bang, an accelerated expansion of the universe. We have known for many years that the universe expands, but we have known for the last 10 years that it not only expands, it accelerates its expansion. We have then also something called dark matter. Dark matter is uh, the, the force, the extra matter that must be in the physical universe to actually explain why galaxies and stars move too fast. Then we have uh, dark energy. Uh, that is the extra energy that must be in the universe to push the universe away from each other so that it actually accelerates. And acceleration needs extra force, and extra power. So dark energy is that. And dark energy, dark matter, is one of the biggest mysteries in the physics. The wave-particle duality is that a photon is a particle and a wave. Everything is both a particle and a wave. And the Copenhagen interpretation said that when you observe it as a particle, you'll find it as a particle. When you observe it as a, a, a wave function, you will observe it as a wave function. We have entanglement in quantum physics. That means that everything is connected with everything instantly. We have the atom in your fingernail connected to an atom in the Andromeda galaxy. And it's happening instantly. This is a known fact in quantum physics and it is a complete contradiction to Einstein's idea about nothing being able to travel faster than light because instant, instant connection is the same as infinite speed. But in quantum physics we have no transformation of data. It's just an instant reaction. If you react on this atom here in your fingernail some atom in the Andromeda galaxy will react due to this reaction. So everything reacts instantly with everything. That's a very, very, very basic um, concept in quantum physics. We have electromagnetism. A lot of people don't know that electromagnetism is actually just waves perpendicular to each other. And it's waves going like this, and then it's waves going like this. And um, actually, everything is electromagnetism because every heat is waves that is emitted from hot solids going out in space as electromagnetism and going out again and receiving or emitting its energy to, towards something else solid out there. So when if, uh, the sun emits sun beams light as we see it light it goes out as electromagnetism it is photons and when the photon arrives at our body we get the energy that was started at the sun so electromagnetism is a complete exchange of energy in the universe everything is electromagnetism in big bang we know in big bang Big Bang is like calculated from going backwards in time. Nobody has seen Big Bang because it's it's impossible. You can see 30 billion years back in time, but you cannot look back to the the last million years or something. Bill, million years, yeah. The last million years, you, you, you don't really see what's happening. You see just the afterglow of the Big Bang, which is the cosmic uh, background radiation. But that's something else. Don't go into that. The Big Bang has no antimatter. That means, actually, that when, uh, when physicists calculate this back to uh, the first time, 
they calculated is it, it, that in the very, very, very short, first short sections, there was matter and antimatter. But within a second, the most of the antimatter disappeared. By definition, mathematics definition, electromagnetism is its own antiparticle. It's really weird. It's not real because it's mathematics, but you have an anti-electron, you have an anti-proton, you have an anti-baryon, you have an anti-boson, you have anti all kinds of particles you have anti, but you do not have anti-light, you do not have anti-photons, you do not have anti-electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is its own anti-particle. That's how it is. When matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate into pure energy. Oof. So, if you have antimatter, because we, we can measure antimatter, if you have antimatter here, and you have matter here, and they go together. They go into pure energy. It's just energy. Big, huge explosion. So if we met our anti-person in an antimatter universe, we would just go away, disappear. This is a fact. This is a fact. I'm going back to the Big Bang because this is a long list. If somebody cares to, they can go through this, stop this video. This is just short. Big Bang is zero time, zero space. Imagine that. Zero time, zero space. This is what, when, when, when you calculate back in time up to present time, the universe decelerates and crumbles into a point where there's no space. And there's no time. No space, no time. That is what Big Bang is. The first happening is that gravity separates out from other forces. Gravity is a very, very weird force in physics because it does not fit together with the other three forces. We have four forces in physics. We have the weak and the strong nuclear force. We have electromagnetism and then we have Gravity and gravity is just it's an outsider and gravity is only explained by Einstein's relativity theory So the Big Bang occurred First gravity separated out from other forces Then strong nuclear force is separated from electromagnetism and weak nuclear So first gravity goes out then strong goes out At that point the universe consists of plasma and plasma is just pure energy. Just energy. It's not even electromagnetism, it's just energy. The highest form of energy. One second after Big Bang, electromagnetism and weak nuclear f uh, force separates. This is really, really funny because just one second after, this is how, this is something they calculate out from smashing photons protons in this big huge accelerator at sand. Very, very exciting stuff. Protons and electrons combine to form neutrons. Protons and electrons combine to form One second after Big Bang, electromagnetism and weak nuclear force separates. So this is where electromagnetism actually separates from plasma. <laughs> One million after Big Bang, the universe becomes transparent and starts looking as we know it. Stars, gases, solids. We have the speed of light. I never thought the speed of light was constant in vacuum because we have no vacuum. But then when you start looking into physics today, we have a lot of fundamental physical constants and a lot of them are based on the speed of light being constant and it is a big huge problem it's a big huge problem to start saying that one of them is not constant but that's what i'm doing i'm taking the bull by its horns saying oh let's take the bull by its horns let's see if the fundamental physical constants is not 
constant. This is actually one of the basic theories. One of the first things that I stumbled upon when I started looking into all this, and I've been looking into it the, my whole life, I'm sorry, I'm a nerd on this, but that is that in the 30s and 40s we found out that charts on the atom looks as if it is infinite. Think about that. It looks as if charts is infinite on an electron. The electron is negatively charged, the proton is positively charged. I have a, a, a picture here of, of something that's not even a picture of an atom. This is just how I imagine an atom. But I imagine an atom more, much more like, like a field of, of waves, much more. I'd say that an atom is the end point of a standing wave. How can the charge on the atom be infinite? When, when the physicists in the 30s, they looked at this, they said, this is, this is ludicrous, this is crazy, this, this is... So they decided, they raised up their hands and said, what should we do about this? Uh, we renormalize, we always renormalize, because we cannot get something infinite, because that is crazy. The chance is not infinite, then everything would collapse if it's infinite. So, so f for, for peace sakes, Let's call the charge on the electron for minus one and the charge on the proton for plus one. And so it has been since. But all physicists working with this knows that infinity is a forbidden word. Infinity is not something likely to occur in physics. I'm a soda scientist, <laughs> to say it the least. But in physics, we will not work with infinity because how can you make infinite um, experiments. It's impossible. So if you start working with infinite, you have to start working with a whole new philosophy. I'm just a philosopher trying to make a new kind of philophysics. Let's call it philophysics. So what we have here in the physical universe is that half the universe is missing. Half the universe is missing. How? We have matter, but we have no antimatter. But we can measure antimatter, but it's lost just like one thousandth of a thousandth of a thousandth of, uh, of what is, uh, is matter. Half of the universe is missing. Not to talk about dark energy and dark matter, which is also a universe missing. So, so basically, we, we, don't have, we don't have very much knowledge about anything. I told you that I would go into the Higgs. The Higgs was a particle uh, predicted by Peter Higgs in the 60s because of the standard model. The standard model works very well with the three forces, the weak, the strong and electromagnetism. Uh, the standard model is my hero because the standard model, model actually in its 60s uh, predicted that there was no mass. Particles does not exist. And again, in the 60s, uh, these physicists they said, Jesus Christ, this is crazy. Particles does not exist. But what is it then that we feel? Because we feel particles. I mean, my hand, it, it does not go through. It's not a wave, it's a particle, it's solid. But the standard model actually predicted that uh, particles does not exist. Then Peter Higgs, a brilliant physicist, He's, he starts out saying, wow, this is not so. So he makes a lot of mathematics and finally comes up with a prediction that he will find the Higgs particle. And then 60 years goes by and uh, the search for the Higgs ended this summer because they found a particle that was predicted to be the, 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 the same energy level, 125 giga electron volt. That's the same energy level as uh, what was predicted, but it's just, the, they called it the Higgs particle, I don't think that it's the Higgs particle, it's just a particle that has 125 giga electron volt energy and they admit that it does not have the quantities and the qualities that the Higgs particle should have, they are looking still into that. There has to be a lot of symmetry in this particle and I don't think they'll find it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's very exciting times for physicists and for, for philosophers, philophysicists like me. So, um, we have virtual particles, I, I just explained it before. Virtual particles is like um, uh, everything 
moves all over the place. There is no vacuum. The zero point field is what they in physics, bond physics today call vacuum, but it has a lot of uh, things happening anyway. We call them virtual particles and that is where there's a constant create and destroy. We have uh, in physics uh, something called multiverse theories, string theories, parallel universe, many dimensions. Uh, why physicists uh, go into this uh, multiverse theory, I have no clue. Uh, because uh, what I can see is that physicists, they go into it. A lot of very well-known physicists say that there must be a parallel universe. And the reason they can continue saying it is that because it's not falsified. But it's not proven either, because how can you prove a parallel universe? But this is one thing that physicists, they talk about, parallel universes. My five cents on all this is that spirituals study the cause, physics study the effect. Physics are good at the effects, spirituals are good at the cause. Or maybe not. But anyway, uh, you, the human race has, since the beginning of time, speculated in what is the cause of all this. And um, there has been a lot of talk about God, let's say it the least. I will not talk very much about it, because I think that we are all gods, we are all creators and destroyers, and we, we are in this together. It's kind of a bit scary. But we are in it together and we have to get out of it together if we want to get out of it. I don't want to because I think it's a great game. But anyway, um, there's lots of different opinions about that. 97.5% of the human race believes in some sort of spirituality. So, you cannot kill it. Physics study the effects of an undefined cause. Even so, if Big Bang is correct and it, everything starts from, from time zero and space zero, then something must have created all this energy inside this zero space and zero time. So physics study the effects of an undefined cause and they are good at it. They are really, really, really good at it. Physics try to explain the cause by describing the effects of the cause. That's what physics do. So they try to explain a cause. So a cause is that I hit my friend in the face. So I hit my friend in the face. So how can anybody explain that by somebody being hit in the face? I'm the cause. Here's the effect. Cut off the cause. Suddenly he gets hit in the face without telling about the cause. It is bound to fail. That is my five cents. Anyway, bye bye. So, as I mentioned before, I've always had the idea that the speed of light is infinite in vacuum. The speed of light is infinite in vacuum. Okay. I'm more liable to say that the speed of light is instant because then it aligns with entanglement in quantum mechanics, because entanglement is that everything is connected with everything instantly. So I say that the speed of light in vacuum is instant, because we have no vacuum. It's impossible to create a vacuum. We cannot create nothing. It's I don't mean that it's instant now, of course. Now it has 300,000 kilometers per second speed and it's fairly constant. But it has been slowed down. When it goes into other electromagnetic fields, it slows down by other fields. It's like a soup, it's going through a soup. It's kind of the ether that was so much talk about. And physics today, physicists today, they, they talk again about some other sort of ether. But um, Electromagnetism is, of course, slowed down to the constant speed that we know in this sector of the universe. And what we are living in is the Milky Way. Big Bang 
and the singularity in time zero also never made sense to me. Singularity is this idea about everything going into one, a single thing. Zero space, zero time, it's a singularity. It's also the, 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 the center of a black hole. A singularity is, in my theory, that it, it approaches zero time, it approaches zero space. You cannot go into zero time and zero space. It is not possible. As it is not possible to create a perfect vacuum. So what I'm writing here is how can all fundamental physical constants be the same in zero time and zero space? How can something move in zero space and zero time? That is what Big Bang postulates. I've been through that so many times. The idea of 2008. In 2008, I found out something that physics have known since back in the 30s with Dirac, Paul Dirac, who, who predicted antimatter. He must also have had the idea, well, there must be as much antimatter as matter. Where is it? So, but I got this crazy idea that I've always been to the spiritual side of light. So I got this crazy idea that what if antimatter is the mind? It was just, uh, in the beginning, it was just an idea. Like, what if? Because I'm interested in this stuff. So I said, what if antimatter is the mind? <laughs> so, what if antimatter is the mind and consciousness of all living entities, from living cells to organized bodies? <sighs> it was a crazy idea. I should never have done that because I've been busy ever since because I cannot figure it out. So I got this idea before this universe. And remember, before this universe, I believe that I believe in the eternal life of living entities. I'm calling them Christrias. That's a living entity. So before this universe, there must have been other universes. As there is a parallel universe, there must have been universes before this universe. But before this universe, there were no light. There was nothing but Christrias, space and time. Of course, there was nothing but space and time because the universe had not been created yet. So before this universe, in a, maybe in a split second, maybe just in a split second, there were no light. There was nothing but Christrias, space and time. The Christrias has infinite space and time. The Christrias has infinite space and time. So this living unit, that is you and me and your dog and your hen and and plants, everything that is alive has infinite space and time. Think about that. Everything alive has infinite space and time. The Christrias creates something. First, plasma. All sorts of energy. Remember, go back to this idea about plasma. It, because this idea, it, it I'm not saying that Big Bang is wrong, because it, it could be right, but we could, instead of putting time it together in, in, in one second, the creation back together in one second, we could expand it to like billions and billions and billions of years, because we cannot see it. Anyway, the Chris Dreyer creates something First, it creates plasma, and it is all sorts of energy. It's just one mishmash, confusion of energy. The Christrier creates this energy in what he knows, infinite space. Remember when I talked about entanglement? Entanglement is the instant uh, connection. This is the instant connection. When, when you have infinite space and you create energy, you create it in infinite space from minus infinity to plus infinity. Whoa, yeah. Electromagnetism and weak nuclear force is the same force and formed out of plasma. There are no other known forces. So I tried to, I, I said that there's strong, the strong force is gravity. They fit together. So that's one force. And then electromagnetism and weak nuclear force is very, very close to each other. It's, I'll, I'll give you a diagram later. It's very, very close. I've, maybe it's coming now. Yeah, it's coming now. <laughs> Great. So my diagrams is in order. 
uh, this diagram shows that there's a, there's a strong force here and there's a weak force here and there's electromagnetic force. The higher energy you put into something, and this is something that you can measure in, at CERN, the higher energy you put into something, the more the electromagnetic and the weak alliance and the strong comes in aligning with it. And remember that I said that the strong could be explained by space-time. Einstein is right when he say that space-time expresses gravity and gravity expresses space-time according to me. But there has to be a revision of it because um, I say that the, the strong nuclear force is gravity. Um, that's a wild, wild thing to say to a physicist. But that's what I say because I say space-time curves space and time so much inside the electron orbit that it actually creates a black hole, or what is close to a black hole. It's a standing wave. It's, it's just energy, compact, complete energy inside the proton. So, um, so gravity actually expresses uh, space-time inside the proton, or inside the electron orbit. And outside the electron orbit, that's cosmologically, um, space-time expresses uh, the expansion of the universe, what we call dark energy. So I, I put up some um, revised Einstein field equations here, and uh, you can check them out if you want to. I don't understand much of it. I got some help <laughs> to figure out how to put it. But um, I talked to a professor about it, and he said, well, if you can make everything else work, then maybe it's okay. Infinite space has now time and motion. Infinite space has now time and motion. Um, remember the plasma merging together, creating something? That's a motion. That's, that's time and motion. Mm. Electromagnetism is a constant create on top of the sinus and destroy on the bottom of the sinus. The combined energy in light is a constant zero. So you have light going this infinite zero minus infinite zero, infinite zero minus infinite zero. So and, and, and that's electricity and magnetism goes perpendicular to that. Infinite uh, magnetism zero, uh, minus infinite magnetism zero, infinite zero. Blah, blah. So it goes from infinite to zero to minus infinite to zero to infinite to zero. This is what I also talked about on the, on the charts on the atom. We see it as infinite. So it makes no sense. So we say, oh, it's one and minus one. That's easier, much easier. But this is the clue. Then we get to the um, tetrahedron. The tetrahedron. Ah! I have to stop my thingy again because I forgot my tetrahedron hat. I have to take it on now. So just one second. So I'm back again. Uh, I, have to, I have to put it on like this. Oh, you have to see here. This is a tetrahedron. This is a tetrahedron. It's a, it's a, a triangle with the same sides. That's called the tetrahedron. And this is how I think that, uh, that, that the universe was created. It's, it's a little bit like Nassim Harakheim. He's also working with the tetrahedron. So, remember the Christraya. It has infinite space. It has infinite time. It has the capability of creating and destroying. So it can create and destroy. So when it meets three others in this perfect figure, the energy, remember the energy was plasma. It creates plasma, like plasma, plasma, energy, 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 energy. create, 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 destroy, destroy, destroy. <sighs> One big create and destroy. The four of them together in this, in this perfect tetrahedron figure, geometrical figure. When they meet in a perfect, they can in the middle, the red spot we see here, in the middle, 
they create a complete condensed energy of plasma. And plasma was the thing that came before electromagnetism. Remember this. Plasma was before electromagnetism. Per the Big Bang. And I'm trying to tell you that the Big Bang is not right, so how can I talk about using the Big Bang as an explanation for something that it's, it's not okay, but I'm doing it anyway. You've come this far, so now you hang on. That point in the middle of this tetrahedron of the four destroyers is the end point of the first standing wave, the hydrogen atom. So they have all this plasma, crushes it together in a point. And it's just condensed energy, infinite energy, infinite energy in the, in the point they meet because they are infinite beings. And that is where electromagnetism is created because the atom now emanates electromagnetism as we know it. Antimatter is the mirror of, of the physical universe and um, your soul or your identity or your, your mind, your consciousness and your unconscious mind is the mirror of the of, of the universe that you have traveled through. You have your own universe and you have traveled through this universe and it's a mirror of it. I believe so much in the mirror theory that actually when antimatter is measured, its mass is, is measured, then I predict that it will fall upwards. If you, you take a bunch of antimatter and, and you actually could hold it and you, you drop it, it'll, it'll fly. It's anti-gravity, because the energy must be negative. If it's not so, when it comes to that, I don't know if I'll... I'll have to, I'll have to observe that, wow, it didn't happen. So I'll have to start thinking again. So it has been for many years. But um, antimatter is the mirror of the universe. That's what I believe. Electromagnetism is its own antiparticle per definition. Each crystal saves its own creation, it's its own universe as antimatter. The responsibility of the first atom is only one fourth as four has to create it in the tetrahedron. This is the crucial point because what happens here is that every four of these crystals they have different viewpoints. This crystal was was um, responsible for some of the energy. This for some of the others, and this for some of the others. When it's splashed together and emanated electromagnetism, there was one, only one fourth of the electromagnetism emanating. That was the responsibility of his. One fourth was the responsibilities of hers. One fourth was uh, the responsibility of his and one-fourth was the responsibility of hers. The one that is responsible for his creation takes his creation and remembers it as antimatter. This is the crucial point. He remembers it as antimatter. He remembers his own creation as antimatter. He has a complete picture of what happened, but he has to remember it. So now he remembers it as antimatter and he remembers it in his own universe. Whew. Remember the wave-particle duality? I say it might be wrong. As the standard model predicted, there is no mass. Everything is standing electromagnetic waves. Everything is standing electromagnetic waves. First plasma, pure energy. Standing electromagnetic waves is what we see. Parallel universe go into each other and you remember your consciousness is in antimatter and when that antimatter meets matter there's an annihilation and you get energy. That is why when you, when you run psycho, uh, psychology, uh, psychotherapy, 
on people, they get energy out of it because they take the energy out of the antimatter and annihilate it with matter. This is one of the points that I think that there might be a chance that you can make an experiment showing that I'm right about consciousness being in the form of, of antimatter. But I don't know, parallel universes is a big, huge, difficult thing to, to explain and to prove right. It can only be said to be theory until further notice. Um, so what, what we have here is that we go from plasma to solids. There are three states of matter that we know of, that is solids, fluids, gases, I say that there's electromagnetism and plasma. So if you reword that, you say the creation is first plasma, then electromagnetism, then it condenses to gases, then that becomes fluids, and then you have solids. So it's like a scale going from pure energy to complete solid material matter. Um, now the four create destroyers looked at their first common creation and they cheered. They said, wow, we created something. And um, they were different universes, so they had different viewpoints of their creation. One of them looks at his own creation and remembers his own creation. His creation continues being in the parallel universes and all creations are in the physical universe. So that's where we get matter. We get solids. We get this idea of things being solid because all the parallel universes, they merge in one universe called the physical universe. Actually, what I think is philosophically, I say that the universe as we know it is the common prediction of all parallel universes. Now I have a lot of text here. And uh, this is the essence of the whole theory. The four destroyers they only observed half of their creation in the common universe. The other half they observed in their own universe as memory, antimatter. Their individual minds were different as they had different viewpoints to look from. The physical universe is matter, the mind of gods. Christoyers are gods. They are infinite in power, they are infinite in space, they are infinite in time. The physical universe is matter, the mind of gods is antimatter. And all universes are merely waves, particles does not exist. All universes are merely waves, particles does not exist. There is no intermental particles. There's no particles going between us. There is intermental waves. It's waves, it's beams, it's radiation, it's electromagnetism. It's going back and forth. It's an illusion. It's a hologram set up by vibrations, motions, waves. The reason matter and antimatter does not annihilate, because they should. Remember? Antimatter meeting matter, going up in pure energy. It doesn't. That is due to antimatter being located in different universes. So, in, the, in my fantasy, in my uh, creation theory, which this is, this is just a theory. In my theory, the creation of the universe was four destroyers created the first um, atom. Then more came and the physical universe was in its birth. So it's a, it's a constant um, expansion of the physical universe. If we look of, uh, at these life entities, Chris Dryas, then we have about 50 to 75 trillion cells in one human body. 50 to 75 trillion cells 
in one human body. Every cell is a crystal. It's just degenerated. It's degraded. It's, uh, the cell is just pure survival. There's nothing left in the cell but survival. So it just has a war going on inside itself. Um, so, so we are composed of 50 to 75 trillion crystals. No wonder that somebody goes crazy. No wonder that somebody goes schizophrenic. We are not schizophrenic. We are multi-trillion schizophrenic. Multi-trillion schizophrenic. It's crazy. I know, but this is the theory. If we start mingling with uh, the speed of light as being a constant, we have to look into all physical constants, and there's lots of them. I have a list here of the most, no, the, the most uh, usual. We have uh, speed of light, magnetic constant, Newtonian constant of gravitation, electric constant, Planck constant, atomic mass constant, neutron mass, proton mass, electron mass, deuterion mass. Physics today assumes, and it's an assumption, that all these constants are constant in the whole universe. From Big Bang till now. From here to the Andromeda galaxies, to the galaxies that we see 30, 13 um, trillion, what is it, billion, 13 billion years ago. In, in, in the start of the universe. We assume that all these constants have been constants all the way through. And they are, they are really hardcore. It's like with a lot of decimals. And, and, and physics usually, in Newtonian physics, it was beautiful. It was like in the, in the second square and the, the square root and that kind of thing. This is just like numbers. This is how, it's not because it's wrong, but it, it's how we measure them at this point in time and space. Planet Earth, solar system, the, uh, the Milky Way. We measured it that way today at this time and place. And we assume that it has been like that all over the place and in all times. So if you start mingling with the speed of light, you have to mingle with all the physical constants. And it's a huge job. And you get nobody to do it. This is the reason I'm sitting here, because maybe you want to do it. <laughs> maybe you're a mathematics. Maybe you're a physics nerd and mathematics nerd and philosophical nerd like, like me. Trying to have the idea that you can mingle these constants into going from minus infinity to zero, the zero point field, to infinity back to zero, back to minus infinity. This is the sequence. <laughs> create, destroy, create, destroy. The zero point field is the vacuum, is where there is the least energy in the physical universe. In quantum mechanics, it's called the vacuum. But as I explained, there is no vacuum, because in the vacuum, even at the lowest energies, you have the zero point field. It's actually something Einstein predicted back in 1916 or 17, I think. But the zero point field is what we see as vacuum, the lowest energy you have. And in my view, it is where, it is where you have uh, plus infinite zero, minus infinite zero in the sinus curves. And um, how I see it is that it's where we meet where my universe meets the physical universe and through my universe and the physical universe, I meet you. So we all parallel universes. Uh, and I have uh, then 50 tr trillion parallel universes in my body, which is like a lot. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm the captain. I'm like the one that makes sure that get something to eat and so on. So, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit more conscious than the cells in my body, that's for sure. But um, the zero point field in my understanding is where uh, the parallel universe meets 
the physical universe. And that is the, in the quantum field. So Penrose is correct when he says that consciousness might be the, on, on quantum levels and not in the neurons and in the brain. It's on a quantum level that the mind should be found. And that, that's what I say too, because that is where the antimatter meets matter. And it's, it's pretty okay because life is 50% of the universe and, and matter is like 50% of the universe, so, so the equation is okay. What can this explain? Dark matter, I'm sure it's a miscalculation because when we look back in time, the speed of light is different back in time. All the, all the constants are a bit different in, back in time. So dark matter, might be able to be explained by by the change in 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 um, constants, fundamental constants in physics. Dark energy, I have explained, is um, uh, is still is um, space time. Dark energy is the expansion. Expansion expresses space time. Gravity expresses space-time, but it's inside the atom with gravity, outside the atom with expansion. So, then we have um, antimatter, and this is all a speech about antimatter, so maybe it has been explained too, I don't know. New inventions is always faster than speed of light travel. Live communication with aliens, that's a good one. I would really love to put on my headphones, say, hello, Andromeda, is there anybody there? And they say, yes, we are here in present time. What do you want, my dear Earthling? Free energy, infinite energy in the proton. I predict that there is infinite energy in the proton. You can take a straw uh, and put it into the proton, start taking energy out of it. Of course, there will come a lot of heat because you start pulling the energy out of the universe. But you can have free energy. There is free energy out there. So we have evolving mind over matter. Um, because this implies that we are spirits, that we are infinite in nature, but we are rather schizophrenic in our uh, multi-schizophrenic way of living together, 50 trillion cells in one body. And best of all, we, are, uh, we have solved the mystery of the spirit. And we are all gods having an earthly experience. My Chris Dreyer theory. What do you think? You are very, very welcome to give me an, a hint. Send me a mail. Give me a phone call. Whatever. I am very, very pleased to brainstorm with somebody who discusses, who says you're way out.